like what I do now means more than it ever has. All of like life's biggest milestones in 12 months. This is what life's all about. It just got 10 times better. I'm not sure if Kai Lenny's like the nicest guy in surfing or one of the craziest. Kai obviously is the man of Jaws, Nazare and foiling, stand up paddling, everything he touches. Oh my God. Deep down inside him, there's a burning desire to be the best. There really isn't a wave too big to paddle into. If I'm in the spot and everything lines up, it's 100% on. He's a unique human. I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> I've always felt like an outsider my entire life. I want to do something that a year ago I couldn't have imagined was possible. OK, Scott, I'll drop you in. Yeah. Yep. You ready? Tear it up. Whoa. Wow, there's some swell out here. Hey, Ahi, also known as Jaws, is one of the most perfect big waves in the world, and it's right in my backyard. Just chaos. The girls are getting restless up here. Can you tell Kai to get a barrel? Go, 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 go. It's amazing how in one year your life can be completely different. Congrats, Dad. Best feeling in the world. Nothing quite like it. You know, the last year and a half has, it's, uh, when we, okay, let me rewind. How, how are we gonna do this? Like, our whole lives are gonna be different. This year, all of a sudden, you know, I have a wife, I have two little baby daughters. When Kai and Molly told us that, you know, they were pregnant, it was like, whoa, like, this is gonna be a crazy change. Like, his life is never gonna be the same again. Molly, how do you, uh... It's just supposed to fold, right? Yeah. If I had my truck, I would just throw it in the back. <laughs> oh, these. Oh. You guys good in there? Yeah. All right, we're going home. I thought my life was crazy before, but now that the team has gotten bigger, life has just gone next level, and I wouldn't change it for the world. Oh, hello. Oh my gosh, you're tiny. This is Willa. She is so adorable. Look, this is her first bit of sunlight, Molly. That's her first sunlight. It's okay, love. Hi, Anna. You want to get center? <laughs> How cute. They are so gorgeous. Oh my God. Look, Noodle, you're going to be your sisters. sisters. <laughs> Hi. Noodle got me prepared because she poops, she Hi, pees Katie. everywhere, Noodle. and she's stinky. What are you thinking oh, about this? And if you can still love her, then it's easy with your own child. <laughs> We made those. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been worried about Kai going out and surfing big waves, ever. Having kids, I feel like it does kind of change that. The consequences to big wave surfing are severe. There's a real danger that you could die any big wave day now because the level's getting pushed so much. Kai Lenny's living right on the edge and you go, I would never, ever, ever have dreamt of doing something like that. 
for a lot of us, like our loved ones that understand that's our passion to push ourselves in those type of waves is a deep understanding of knowing that we are doing everything we can to mitigate that worst case scenario. Kai is really dealing with like life and death situations more than almost anybody on earth right now in the big wave scene. Molly understands firsthand how dangerous surfing is. Like, doesn't get any closer to home than the injury that her brother had. When Kai and I were growing up, Dusty was already a pretty like prominent figure coming out of Maui. He really did represent what it meant to be a core surfer. My older brother, Dusty, was the first surfer from Maui to ever make the world tour. And he and I are really close. I ended up getting a call from Molly saying that Dusty was in critical condition headed to uh, Queens Medical Center. And uh, you know, my heart just dropped. We didn't know if he was gonna make it because it was that serious of an injury. Dusty hit his head as hard as you could at backdoor pipeline, and it's the worst nightmare for any surfer. I don't remember anything. Learning, walking, that was a big hurdle. Like, I, I thought I'd be lucky to ride a longboard again. And... To see his recovery and the way he's come back is just the most inspiring thing. He still has an incredible career. That guy's fucking ripping. <laughs> you know, I think the girls will end up growing up idolizing their uncles because, you know, they're just such cool cats. Kai, he's, he's so focused at what he's doing and it's inspiring to see. It makes you want to be better at what you're doing. He's a freak. He's just wild. Hit it! Oh! Oh my God! <laughs> She's so stoked. That was your last wave. You made a barrel. I think they're ready for mama now. Huh? Yeah. All righty. Seeing the change Kai's gone through and starting to raise these little humans has been so cool because it really brought out kind of the best parts of his personality. Yeah. Bless you. The moment it all sunk in that I was a dad was, you know, they were cleaning off the babies and everything and I was just holding Willa and, and I was looking down at her. I'm like, she's so little, so fragile. So like, like, I don't know if I feel like responsible enough for this, you know, like this, this is such a heavy, powerful moment. I've never felt anything like it. And you, know, you feel that moment you do anything for them. I knew just from watching him with my niece and nephews, what a good dad he was gonna be. I honestly think him having girls was the best thing. Um, he's in such a macho world constantly that I think good to soften him up and stuff and just watching him become a dad has been amazing. You know, the fact of the matter is you're never truly ready until it happens and then you just rise to the occasion. The tough thing that you know, I can imagine he's struggling with as being a parent is that what we do is insanely dangerous and some might call it borderline reckless. So, you know, when you do have like, you know, your adorable kids at home, like, will it make you want to pull back on that one wave that before you might've gone on? I got this question a lot. Do you still want to surf big waves? Has it like changed you in any way? You know, I'm a pretty good authority on, on this question. After having kids, 
I was just more stringent in deciding which days to push it, which days not to, it became clear. I look to Shane as being the ultimate example of how I want to be with my family and my kids. When he started paddling into Jaws, he was already in his 40s, and he dominated into turning 50. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I surfed the biggest waves ever surfed after I had kids, for sure. Just realizing that, like, you can't just stop doing what you love to do just because something has changed. My greatest ride in big waves is yet to be ridden, and, you know, I have until I'm 50 to go get, you know, the ride of the year. <laughs> He really, truly loves the experience and the challenge, and he's out there for all the right reasons. The only real reason you're gonna be out there is if you really, truly love it. Oh my God, that was so close. Oh. That was so close. Oh, that's the wave. The spectrum wasn't huge. I would have made it. Oh my God, that was perfect. Though. I it. When I transitioned into surfing big waves, it was just as my heroes were transitioning out. So I really never had a moment to be out there with them and like not competing against them, but just like going toe to toe with them. Brett Lickle is one of those guys that I took a huge amount of inspiration from. Even though Brett himself isn't riding the waves, but he's on the jet ski, it just feels good to have those legends out there. Pioneering Jaws, basically walking on the moon. Rode the first wave and was just like, oh my God. For years, we sat on the cliff and looked at it and saw the potential, but also saw the potential for disaster. I remember Laird looking at me and going, dude, don't fucking die. He knew me dying was easy. It was dealing with the kids. It was dealing with my wife. It was an unspoken rule. You, you surfed out there like you were there to live another day. It just so happens that Brett's youngest, Skylar Lickle, has taken like a real interest into riding these big waves and she's really, really good at it. When she came to me and said, I want to surf Jaws, Dad, and I'm like, well, no. You can do all the breath holding courses you want. If you get hit in the head, the chest, or anywhere where the wind is knocked out of you, game's over. So you better have a backup. And so I'm her rescue guy, I'm her tow driver, and we've had an incredible partnership. I think the ultimate is when you can team up with your son or your daughter and you can go get waves. When I see Brett and Sky doing it, it's like so rad, like I want to do that. But that's a long ways away and it's rad to see the next generation. And now that I have girls of my own, like I'm really excited to see the girls now stepping into the big wave realm and you know, proving to everyone that they can do it. Cause I know my girls are gonna be watching them. quite deep enough but we'll take it. It was good. <laughs> okay. Let's <laughs> make another one. <laughs> At the end of the day it all comes down to family. Sharing these experiences with the ones you love most. There's nothing better than that. 
I want my girls to see me as who I am in my prime. Jaws has held a very special spot in my heart, and of course, my girls are the top of my world. And for them to grow up just as I did with their earliest memories, watching that wave, very special. It, it just felt like I didn't have to be anywhere else on earth except for right there in that moment, because my whole world was there.